Hello and welcome to an Affinity Revolution tutorial. My name is Ezra Anderson, and today we're going to master Affinity Photo's incredible in-painting brush. We'll start off by learning about the basics of this tool, and then we'll learn some more advanced tips and tricks. For today's video, we'll be using the iPad version of Affinity Photo, but all of the techniques we learn can easily be applied to the desktop version. If you'd like to follow along with the same pictures that I'll be using, I've included a download link in the video description. To start off this video, let's figure out what exactly is inpainting. Inpainting is smart content removal. Affinity uses good information in the surrounding parts of your image to remove the imperfections that you paint over. To see how inpainting works, we're going to remove this man that's being thrown up into the air from the photo. Before we do any inpainting though, we want to duplicate our background layer. To do this, tap once with two fingers and then press duplicate. Now if we come to the layer studio, you'll notice that we have two copies of the background image. The reason we do this is so that we can always go back to the original photo if we don't like the changes we've made on the duplicate copy. Our next step is to get out the in-painting brush. You can do this by tapping twice on the clone brush. Then select in-painting brush. Now all we need to do is paint over the part of the photo that we want to remove. In this case, we'll paint over the man being thrown up into the air. You can see that Affinity has removed the man from the picture by taking the information it found in the surrounding area. In this example, it replaced the parts of the photo that we painted over with information it found in other parts of the sky. And although Affinity did a very good job this time, it doesn't always do a good job the first time you paint over an imperfection. If you ever find that Affinity has only partially removed an imperfection from your photo, just paint over the area a second time. Even if the in-painting brush doesn't get it right the first time, it can usually remove an imperfection the second or third time that you paint over it. After you're done in-painting, you can see the before and after by checking off and on the duplicate layer that we made inside the Layer Studio. Now that we know the basics of how the in-painting brush works, let's go on to another example to continue learning how we can best use this tool. In this photo, we're going to use the in-painting brush to clean up some of the sand on the beach. Before we do anything though, we're going to duplicate our background image by tapping once with two fingers and then press duplicate. Now we'll press twice on the clone brush so we can select the in-painting brush. Now we can begin painting over parts of the beach that we want Affinity to clean up. While we're working on this photo, I want to share a couple of tips with you that can make your in-painting even more effective. Almost always, you'll want to bring your hardness up to 100% in the contextual toolbar. I've done quite a bit of experimenting with trying out different hardness levels while in-painting, and I can tell you that 100% works best almost all of the time. It's also a good idea to lower the width of your brush if you're trying to remove small imperfections like what we're doing in this photo. Once you have a small brush, you'll also want to zoom in so you can more easily see the imperfections. Ideally, as you're removing imperfections from your picture, you want your paint to completely cover the imperfection, but not much more than that. If you paint too large of an area, then Affinity might start removing good parts of your picture. So do your best to paint just over the imperfection and not other parts of the picture. If you want to move around your photo, while you have the in-painting brush out, just click and drag with two fingers. 
Because of course, if you just click and drag with one finger, then you'll apply the in-painting brush. I'm going to take a minute to paint over some of the imperfections in this photo. After you're done painting over your picture, you can tap twice with two fingers to zoom back out to 100%. To see the before and after, I'll check off and on the duplicate layer that we made. With the in painting brush, it's very easy to clean up any photo. To give you another example of what we can do with the in painting brush, we're going to use this tool to clean up the man's skin. Although he doesn't have any acne, we can use the in painting brush to help clean up some of the wrinkles on his face. Before we do anything though, I'll tap once with two fingers and duplicate our background image. Then I'll pull out the in painting brush. Removing wrinkles is the same as removing any other imperfection from a photo. All you need to do is zoom in and paint over the imperfection. It looks like my width is a little too big for this picture, so I'm going to undo that last paint stroke and then lower the width of my brush. Now let's try painting over that wrinkle again. As we learned in the last example, we want to have the smallest brush size possible, so we paint over just the imperfection and not any of the surrounding good area that we don't want to remove. Let's try painting over a couple more wrinkles. By using the in-painting brush, we've quickly removed the wrinkles from his forehead. However, doing cleanup like this on a photo can quickly make it look unrealistic. We never want to edit a photo so much that it looks like it's been edited. To solve this problem, we can lower the opacity of this duplicate layer that we've made so some of the original wrinkles will still show through. To do this, we'll press on the three circles at the top left of the layer studio, and then lower this layer's opacity. Now if we press on layer options again, we can check off and on our duplicate layer. Now we haven't completely removed the wrinkles, but we've made them less intense. Depending on the look you're going for in your photo, you can make the layer opacity higher or lower than what I used in this photo. In our last example, we're going to try removing the sticker from the bottom of one of these books. Before we do that though, we're going to duplicate this layer. Then we'll pull out the in painting brush. I'm going to zoom into the imperfection and try painting over it. It looks like Affinity has not done a perfect job. One thing that we could do would be to continue painting over this area to try and remove the imperfection. In this case, that actually works quite well. However, sometimes you'll paint over an area multiple times and it will never look quite right. That's because we can't choose where the in-painting brush is drawing its information from. If there were some way for us to specify where the in-painting brush was drawing its information from, then we could more accurately remove imperfections from our pictures. And believe it or not, there is a way for us to do this. To see how this is possible, I'm first going to delete this duplicate layer that we've made and then reduplicate the original background image. Then we're going to come to the selection persona. Now with the rectangular marquee tool, I'm going to click and drag to make a selection of just the good area that I want Affinity to use when we're filling in this sticker at the bottom of the book. Now I'm going to apply a mask to this layer so only this part of the image is visible. To do this, I'll press on the mask icon in the layer studio and then make a new mask layer. Then I'll tap once with two fingers to deselect. And we'll come back into the photo persona so we can get the in painting brush. It looks like nothing has changed since the first time we did our in-painting, but if we uncheck the original background layer, you'll notice that our duplicate layer only has this part of the layer visible. Remember that the in-painting brush takes information 
from the surrounding area to fill in the part of the photo that you paint over. In this case, we've made it so this is the only information that the in-painting brush can draw from. Now let's see what happens when we paint over this sticker. Just make sure that you have the duplicate layer selected, and then you can begin painting. You can see that Affinity has now done a perfect job because we specified where the good information is that it could draw from. If we check back on the original background image, we can see that the sticker has been successfully removed. This is an advanced technique for the in-painting brush, and you might not need to use it very much, but it's good to know that you have the option of specifying where the information is that the in-painting brush will draw from. Now that you know how the in-painting brush works, you can remove just about any imperfection from your photos.